Welcome to the Metals Daily News brought to you by Metals Update, the driving force behind your business. I'm Kopal Chima from the Mumbai office on 17 July 2017. The Gujarat High Court on Monday dismissed SR Steel's petition that had challenged the Reserve Bank of India's directive to banks for initiating insolvency proceedings against the company. Justice Ed G. Shah passed an oral order saying no relief will be granted to SR. A detailed order is expected later this evening. Alongside, there comes another news from SR as their Vishakapatnam port or OHC registers 21% growth in first quarter. The OHC handled 2.65 million tons in the first quarter as against 2.19 million tons in the first quarter of the preceding financial year. SR Group took over the OHC from the Vishakapatnam port in 2015 on build, operate and transfer basis for a period of 30 years, investing Rs. 725 crores so far in upgrading the terminal till date. Once fully upgraded, the terminal will be able to achieve a capacity of 8,000 tons per hour, one of the highest cargo handling rates in major ports in the country. In steel, China had produced record amounts of steel and aluminium in June this year as producers rushed to cash in on rallying prices in the wake of a drive by Beijing to crack down on output of low-grade metal. This fuels concerns that the world's top steel producer will export more metal, stocking global oversupply and fanning tensions with the United States after it is accused, after it accused the nation of flooding international markets with cheap aluminium and steel. U.S. President Donald Trump has threatened to use a Cold War era law to restrict imports for national security reasons as bilateral talks between Washington and Beijing continue. U.S. President Donald Trump has threatened to use a Cold War era law to restrict imports for national security reasons as bilateral talks between Washington and Beijing continue. National Statistics Bureau data on Monday showed that Chinese steel output last month increased 5.7% from the year before to a record 73.23 million tons, surpassing April's all-time high of 72.78 million tons. Aluminium production jumped 7.4% year-on-year to 2.93 million tons, exceeding December's record of 2.89 million tons. Analysts told media that the increase came as local steel and aluminium prices increased after the government cut back on metals producing capacity earlier in the year as it battles a glut in the supply to reduce pollution. And one should not see it as a provocative move ahead of a decision by the United States on possible import tariffs. The United States International Trade Commission released its report on the global aluminium market last week. It determined that Major price declines and consumption growth in the worldwide aluminium market were primarily the responsibility of China. A major point made by the report is that competitiveness in the aluminium industry hinges upon low-cost electricity for primary producers, reliable scrap supplies and operating in the vicinity of end markets for secondary markets. Russia, Canada and the GCC each had low-cost and abundant electrical supplies for their primary aluminium market which helped boost those regions into the upper level of global aluminium production. However, the exception to this finding was the Chinese aluminium industry. The report found that high energy costs did not slow down the country's aluminium sector, as producers there became competitive thanks to captive power plants fueled by cheap coal, low capex costs, low labour costs, better technology and the use of molten aluminium to make wrought aluminium products. However, as the report again pointed out, government intervention in the sector also played an important role in supporting the country's producers. President Donald Trump's administration has has decisions pending on both steel and aluminium, blaming China for overproducing and creating global gluts. Earlier this month, Trump told reporters that China, as well as other countries, are, I quote, dumping steel and destroying our steel industry. They've been doing it for decades and I'm stopping it, it will stop, end quote. Media reports that while China's overseas sales of steel contracted 28% to 41 million tons over the first six months, exports of aluminium increased 5.9% to 2.41 million tons. In coal, India ratings reported that India's domestic coal production is all set to increase on account of government efforts to reduce imports. Coal India Limited has set a production target of 600 million tons in financial year 18 and uh, 618 million tons in financial year 19 
compared with the financial year 17 target of 554.1 million tons. They expect domestic coal consumption growth in India to remain tepid on account of an expectation of a 2% fall in the FY18 plant load factor of coal-based plants. Furthermore, the agency expects the PLF to remain sub-65% in the medium term. Given domestic coal availability is likely to increase, thermal coal imports are likely to decline by 15 to 20 million tons annually over the next 2-3 years. This would affect global seaborne trade. Government policies in large seaborne trade participants are likely to have a significant influence on coal prices. The agency assumes thermal coal prices for FY18 to 20 to soften and trade in a band of 50 to 60 US dollars per ton. When it comes to renewable energy, the agency expects competition from renewable energy will continue to increase with technological advancements reducing capital costs stating that renewables contribution to global primary energy needs is likely to grow at a faster pace at 4% by 2020 from the current estimated 3%. However, renewables may meet a portion of incremental energy demand and thus fossil fuel would still remain a dominant contributor to global primary energy needs. Coal, marginally behind crude, is likely to continue to be the second largest contributor to global primary energy needs at about 27%, 168.6 quadrillion British thermal units. Internationally, Queensland's do dominant commodity, coking coal, is back in demand again with its price spiking to 153 US dollars per ton in recent weeks, recording a rise of almost 10%. China's steel production growth and tighter domestic coal supplies were probably driving the rebound for coal prices, which have been on a roller coaster in the past year. Critical shortages in China last year drove the price to record territory of 310 US dollars per ton. And earlier this year, Cyclone Debbie knocked out the Queensland coal train network, forcing the price back above 300 US dollars per ton. This comes as iron ore prices have shown signs of recovery, also because of pollution issues in China and stronger demand for steel, which is also a factor in the coking coal price. In international offers, Liberia Origin HMS 1 and 2 and used rail scrap mix is being offered at 240 US dollars per metric ton at FOB basis. While CFR India is around 260 US dollars per metric ton and CFR Bangladesh is around 265 US dollars per metric ton. In domestic ferris offers, Metals Update assessed offers of MS scrap from Mandi Gobingar market at Rs 19,900 per ton, while MS Ingot at Mandi Gobingar is being quoted at Rs 27,700 per ton. At Raipur and Muzaffarnagar, the Ingot offers have been recorded at Rs 24,700 and Rs 27,500 per ton respectively. In domestic non-ferrous offers, Metals Update assess spot offers of aluminium ingot from Delhi market at Rs 141 per kg, copper scrap is being offered at 370 per kg and zinc slab is being offered at Rs 206 per kg on Monday. Thank you for watching. Join us again tomorrow for latest updates from the metals market. Visit petalsupdate.com for more information and do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day ahead.